Srila Rupa Goswami recommends that even if one cannot live permanently on the banks of Radha Kunda, he should at least take a bath in the lake as many times as possible. This is the most important item, item in the execution of the devotional service. Sri Bhakti Vinotaku writes in this connection that Sri Radha Kunda is the most selected place for those interested in advancing the devotional service in the wake of the lady friends, Sakis, and confidential maidservants, Manjaris of Srimati Radharani. Gurudev, you see the Manjaris? Mahaprabhu appearance for the Manjaris giving in the falling time in the Kali Yuga to develop Manjari Swarup. Devotee. Actually, the devotee is reading from Srila Prabhupada book, Upadeshamrita, where the last in Sri Upadeshamrita, there are only 11 instructions, like 11 slokas. But Sloka 9, 10, and 11, they're all speaking about Radha Kunda. And Jayananda Maharaj, he ex I remember when I was in Vrindavan, he explained about this book of Srila Prabhupada. That Prabhupada first, he translated Bhagavad Gita. Then he translated Srimad Bhagavata. Then he translated Chaitanya Charitamrita. Then he wrote many, many other books. And his final book, Sri Rupa Goswami's Sri Upadeshamrit. So you can think that. This is Prabhupada's last message, <laughs> most important instruction. And if you read the book, Sri Upadeshamrita, also the last purport from the last sloka, 11th sloka, Prabhupada also talking about Radharani, Manjari, Radha Kunda. Right, Jayananda Maharaj? <laughs> yes. So, as far as my understanding like this, at first Prabhupada translated Bhagavad Gita and then Bhagatam. And then, I don't know which is real order, but uh, he wrote Krishna book, Nectar book, Devotion, Teaching of Chaitanya. I don't know which one is first, but uh, he did. And also, meantime, he translated Bhagatam. Especially, first canto he brought from India to, to United States. 
I think from second canto, he starts at United States. And then he translated Chaitan Charita Milita. He finished 1975. At that time, Prabhupada asked Rameshwara Maharaj at that time, please make a book in, in the two months. And then devotee was completely shocked and then they made 17, 70 book of Chaitan Charitamrita within the two months. This published 1975. And they did in Los Angeles temple in Iskong, New Dwaraka. Because I was staying in New Dwaraka 1980, 80, maybe nine, 1990. So at that time, I met the other devotee who, who did, who did, you know, two months publishing. Some devotees in the mic. Huh? Sundaram, can you hear me? Or maybe Shidanta Mahara, you can do this? <laughs> sometimes the material life, you know, sometimes unknowingly we do something. <laughs> and then, okay, so. And then 1976, this Upadisha Murita is published. And uh, so, in 1996, I think September, Prabhupada wrote like a preface. So, and then I was thinking 1976 is just before Prabhupada's so, Prabhupada left his body in 1977, November 14th. So, in this 1976 is, uh, pra practically speaking, Prabhupada's uh, quite uh, last stage of uh, his, uh, his, uh, his life. And uh, he did uh, translation, this Upadesha Murita. So therefore, I was thinking this Upadesha Murita is kind of last message of Prabhupada. And uh, I also feeling everybody knows Bhagatam has 18,000 births, about 18,000 births. Chaitanya Charita Murita about 11,500 births, about. And uh, Gita had 700 bars. But uh, this Upadesha Murita only 11. This is also amazing, Rupa Gosami, how select 11 bars. Especially that, you know, Gora Chandra said, last three bars was really amazing. Because ultimate goal is described. Especially uh, Baba Urasa Rasa about Manjari Baba. And uh, some people say this Upadesha Murita is translate his disciple. And, uh, and then this disciple showed Prabhupada. And then this, and then Prabhupada agreed this translation. 
Well, maybe Prabhupada correct some, some, some parts. But anyway, he did, he agreed this translation. And this, as, as far as I know, Prabhupada did not mention about Manjari. Very few places, almost nothing. But this last book, he mentioned Manjari, Manjaris. Like a teaching of Tai Chan, uh, like Lord, Lord, uh, teaching of Lord Chaitanya from beginning, Prabhupada said Manjari is Radhika's assistant, lady assistant, something like this. But here, <laughs> Prabhupada mentioned and Manjari. This is also very much amazing for me because in Chaitanya Charita Murita, as far as I know, no place, Prabhupada did not mention about Manjari. Bhagatam, he did not mention Manjari. <laughs> but last book, he did mention Manjari. This is for me very much amazing. And uh, if we read Upadesha Murita, then he, Rupa Goswami recommended living in Buraja and living yeah. in Radha Kunda. Also highly recommend to, to become maid servant of Srimati Radhika. So this is uh, one sense we can understand Prabhupada's real Rupa Nuga devotee. Prabhupada also desire to, to desire to ask to be made servant of Radhika. That's my key. So Diane DJ, so if you can yeah. Radhi, Radhi, no, I just want to ask. So, Upadeshamrita is the last book of Prabhupada? Of, you know, of course, the other sense, Prabhupada was translating Bhagatam. So, and then Bhagatam is 10th canto, I think 14th chapter is the last, two, you know, his translation. But uh, only one book, as far as one book, one title, I, I feel this is one of the last book. This is my understanding. No, thank you. Very interesting. Yeah, very late published, no? Nah? Yeah, at least late published. Mm -hmm. 1976, that is sure. Yeah. It's surprising that some people, they think that Prabhupada was not Manjari, but in Saka, no? <laughs> like friendship mood. <laughs> how, how this conclusion is coming, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, I understand, <laughs> I understand, but, <laughs> but it's not reasonable for me. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, why you th why you think that others they think like that? How yeah, do you understand that? Because Prabhupada, you know, uh, Iskon GBC. There is after Prabhupada left his body, many things, many problems coming out. Then the body was thinking. Okay, let us publish Prabhupada letter. Let us think in Prabhupada conversation. <laughs> and then later on, I don't know, GBC or BBT, they publish Prabhupada five volume letter. Not all letter, but uh, you know, as far as they correct letter, they publish five volume Prabhupada letter. And uh, also, Prabhupada conversation book. I, I, before I, I had, but now I, I don't know where, like a 20 or 40 volume books, Prabhupada conversation. Yeah. And then, then devotees start reading. 
And then some occasion, Pabupada mentioned, I'm Saka was, you know. So, and then devotee taking this part. Oh, Pabupada actually, you know, Saka or something. And also, uh, some place also say, Pabupada is like a maid servant of Shurimate Radharani. I don't know Pabupada say directly, but uh, if we read his biography, Pabupada mother always pray, pray to Lord, my son should be the maid servant of Shurimate Radharani. That means, yes. that means their Pahupada's father and mother, they are completely go their Vaishnava, especially they are coming from Nityananda, is, is, I don't know, Nityananda's kind of, I don't know real parampara, but uh, Nityananda's kind of related uh, person. As far as, you know, so, you know, because later, sometimes, you know, we, we do some conversation. Sometimes we do some kind of joke. You know, we may say many different things to different devotee. And we do not know what kind of situation Pahupada say. I, I have, I had five volume letter. I have read. Then interesting is I was understanding and I realized. Pabupada say different teaching to different devotee. Mm. This is very interesting for me. Pabupada did teaching, different teaching, different devotee. Then later on I understood. Because, you know, later is a very personal thing. Mm. So if Pahupada say, oh, this person should be like this, then Pahupada may say, you know, you may drink, you may drink like, you know, tea, no problem, you know. Or sometimes say, you can do this. Like a general instruction is A, but a specific instruction might be B. Actually, many places this is happening. Therefore, last time, uh, Jagatan Didi told us, Pauban letter should not publish. <laughs> because to understand letter, we have to know Pauban, which person Pauban is writing. What kind of situation, what kind, what, what kind of time, Pahupad, you know, Pahupad is teaching that person. Time, place, circumstance, and person. We have to know. Otherwise, we may misunderstand. Misunderstand. So therefore, Pahupad, uh, I did not, I don't know, but Jagatan did say, Pahupad said, don't publish my letter. But uh, many confusion is happening, so they 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 have to they had have to published. But after after reading Pahupa letter, I was a little bit you know confusing because according to time, place, and circumstance and person, Pahupada did different teaching. Then I understood. Oh, actually, this is very personal thing. So <laughs> therefore. You know, different situation, Pahupada may say different thing. Then some person take in this part. Then this is all and all. So Pahupada might say, oh, you know, I was a coward boy, you know. But, uh, but uh, that may, might be kind of joking or kind of, you know, like, uh, not a real thing, but uh, devotee just take one, one or two part and all in all. That is our, I think, our problem, you know, because even our Gurudev teaching different things to different devotee, or I experience 
Gurudev teaching different morning and evening. And next day, again, different teaching. Unless we are, we are completely fixing Gurudev or completely facing Gurudev, then we may say, Hey, Gurudev, what you are doing, you know, all the way you are teaching <laughs> is, <laughs> is different, you know. But I understand why Gurudev teaching different. Because Gurudev is watching my consciousness, our consciousness, our, our surrendering. Then according, and sometimes Gurudev testing me, <laughs> testing us. So how much you, you can accept me, accept my teaching? One day Gurudev teaching me, we need hundred person surrenders person. Otherwise, you say sometimes you know, good them say, you know, very personal thing, you know. Because if we we don't hundred percent surrender, then if, then if we say different teaching morning and evening or next day, then devotee thinking, oh, this person is crazy. Not consistent, you know, his teaching is not steady, always changing. You know, but if we understand Gurudev watching me, my consciousness, our consciousness, then according to Gurudev give me light instruction, light moment. Then, then we can advance. Otherwise, all of the doubt is coming. That's my understanding. So therefore, you know, even among the ISKCON, Paupa say, you know, Paupa say like this, Paupa say like this, that is okay. But we have to see what is Rupa Goswami's teaching? What is Sanatana Goswami teaching? What is Ranganadas Goswami teaching? And Paupa teaching what kind of time, place, circumstance, and person, then we understand more. Because like, you know, Prabhupada say, don't base Radha Kunda. But Rupa Goswami say, as much as possible, we have to base Radha Kunda. So why Prabhupada say like this? My understanding like this, because Western devotee, when Prabhupada brought Western devotee to Radha Kunda, devotee starting jumping, swimming, kicking at Radha Kunda. Then Brajabasi, Radha Kunda was so disturbed. What kind of person Prabhupada bring? So, they may say, they may criticize Prabhupada. So therefore Prabhupada say, you know, don't be, make offense. <laughs> but you, you don't, you know, better not to base Radha Kunda. Just pay obeisance and touch the, you know, the water. Three drop. Pass. That is Prabhupada. That's my understanding. So this is, you know, this is even Prabhupada also different time, different teaching. But we have to know what real Rupa Goswami teaching, what is the real teaching of Raghunadas Goswami, what's the real teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this we have to understand. This understanding coming from our Guru Parampara, this understanding coming from the mercy of our Ishtadev. What guru there? <laughs> that is my understanding. And also, Mahanidhi Baba was very interesting. One day, Mahanidhi Baba said, Mah Mahanidhi Baba's Guru Dev said, Absolute, absolute truth is subjective. And then Mahanidhi Baba could not understand. He was wondering two weeks, he was thinking two weeks, what do you mean? The absolute truth is subjective. And then, means, 
Absolute truth may, may understand, may accept differently according to different person's understanding and Baba, Lhasa, etc. So, <laughs> therefore, Prabhupada mentioned the absolute truth. People thinking, oh, this absolute truth is Lord Krishna. That's also okay. But some person understand, oh, this absolute truth is Sri Radharani. Because Prabhupada mentions absolute truth is the source of all energies. So, like, you know, similarly, Krishna could understand according to feeling, according to rasa. We cannot say this rasa is wrong. This is rasa is right. We cannot say like this. So, therefore, this sometimes, you know, truth become always, you know, this truth may understand different way. That is Mahanid Baba, the Guru Dev's teaching. <laughs> Sorry, I talk little. <laughs> Yeah, very interesting. Absolute truth. In the spiritual world, everything is absolute. But still, there's variety. Different, different things are there. So, according to your own mood, the absolute truth is perceived in different way. Everything is absolute, but Subjective means, what is my perception? How real I realize that? What is my mood? What is my relation with the absolute truth? <laughs> that, that is very interesting. Because, you know, when I came to Gurudev, I had so many, you know, I have to adjust understanding because at first Pau, uh, Guru Dev said Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Gadadara is Radha Shakti. You know? <laughs> and then I, you know, I start thinking, oh my God, how can I understand, especially Radha Shakti? Oh my God. And then at that time also I have faith on Guru Dev. Because my understanding like this, Guru Dev is really Abadud. He did not read Shastra so much. But the previous life, he, oh, he did all study Shastra. My, this is my understanding. He is saying according to his realization, according to his Guru Dev's mercy. So the question, our, our problem is how to understand Guru Dev. How, how can we understand? Or how, how could do adjust? Because sometimes Iskon devotee may come, Godiamata devotee may come. Hey, Sad Maharaj is, you know, say like this, why is that? He's, he's, he's not, uh, uh, he, he did not say same thing as Prabhupada. Many people, you know, some people may say, my duty is this adjust, you know, my duty is to adjust this why. <laughs> then slowly, slowly I understand, okay, if I understand like this, I, you know, I can protect Guru Dev or, you know, this is kind of consistent. Pavupa teaching and Guru Dev teaching is, is, is not different. So, you know, this is a very uh, interesting, deep subject to Mata. Radhe Radhe. Yeah, Amasuniti also. Iti, yes, I would yeah. like to share, Radhe. <laughs> Very interesting also, and I agree. Everything you say, Janana Maharaj, is um, 
a matter also of my own realization in how far and how deep I can connect to the realizations or the mood of my Gurudev. So we find that, you know, so many devotees think they understand Srila Prabhupada and all of them will say in a different way. And we have these examples from the scriptures. I remember that there's one elephant and then this big elephant, 10 blindfold sadhus, they are catching elephant at different, different parts of the body. And they should say what they feel or how they perceive the elephant. So one is catching here at the ear and they say, oh, this is very uh, soft. And, uh, <laughs> and then somebody has the has the leg and they say, oh, it's very big and very rough. So according to my own or our own realizations, we will be perceiving the Guru Tattva. But actually, yeah, like you said, Srila Prabhupada also to different times, different devotees, he speak different. And I want to give one example that I remember in that regard. This book, uh, full, um, perfect answers, perfect questions. It was also one of the first, like, small helping books for beginners. And it was written by a Prabhupada disciple who was also a Peace Corps worker in America. Anyway, in that book, there's also one conversation but Prabhupada is speaking with a very young girl about Krishna. She was the first time there with Prabhupada. And at that time also Prabhupada said, yes, Krishna is so attractive. And she was asking questions. And she said, can I also kiss Krishna? And Prabhupada said, yes, at one time you can kiss Krishna. So like this, he was giving different, different food. And I know uh, in the times of Narayan Maharaj, we would call it, or he would call it baby food. Shri Guru gives the baby food to different, different babies that he is feeding. Because some they need to have this, and some they need to have this to grow. Not every baby is the same. And I also remember Narayan Maharaj, in the end, in his last years of his being here with all of his devotees. Because many disciples of Narayan Maharaj were the older, also mature and senior Prabhupada disciples. And they want to make everything better this time, right? Because with Prabhupada, there were so many this, you know, misunderstanding or, you know, something that somebody try to understand in a fixed way, but like you said, the letters would not allow to understand it in a fixed way. Because Sri Guru is always teaching, you know, in Parakya Bhav, especially in our line, Parakya Bhav, this is the hidden and not always 100% like you can write it on the paper and then you make a checklist. Yeah, now this and this and this. This is how our material mind wants to understand everything with like a checklist. Now I did this, then I, I have to do this. I have to learn this shloka. And then I will realize more. This is the material conception of trying to understand. But in spiritual life, understanding means really to go deep into the feelings of someone in the heart. And that we have to you know, be given. It is like a gift. So I remember that I want to share also with Narayan Maharaj, when everyone wants to make sure that they have everything perfect and the, you know, they always went to him in his room and they tried to make him sign this and, you know, is this right? And and one time even they they went to him And they ask him, you know, Gurudev, um, in, uh, in, uh, in the Western countries, the cows uh, who are brought to the slaughterhouse, uh, 
they will be milked and there will be maybe some blood of the mill in the milk when this is not better that we all become vegan and uh, not drink the uh, you know take the things from the cows and he said yes 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 <laughs> and i remember in the last years um he was always saying three things because so many devotees came and always want to make everything sure, you know, make everything perfect. And he said three words. <laughs> and I was always laughing. He said, yes and no and very good. <laughs> so he was giving these uh, answers to the people who were pressing him also to give answers in the way that they want to hear it, right? So they even would say that in the end, oh yeah, maybe Narayan Maharaj also said we should all be vegan. You know, they try to press things out of out of Shri Guru, and we know that is not the way how it works. We cannot press, you know, the truth out of Shri Guru. We have to feel what they feel. And like you said, now with our Gurudev also, he's very other dude. He's very, uh, he always says that, I'm mad. You know, I'm sorry, I'm mad. Because he's also swimming in different, different bhavas, in different times, with different devotees, with different listeners. So that is a big secret also in bhakti. To feel what is Sri Guru wanting to tell me now and why maybe sometimes he says this to one disciple and that to another disciple. That is a big secret also. It is not uh, static. It is not like fixed. It's not written you know, in any book how it should be that we can advance, how we should, uh, you know, there's no rule even. And we have always, if you if you study the Shastras, we have always two or three even opportunities or possibilities to understand. Sometimes you can make one statement and you can find another statement that is completely opposing. So that leaves us also a little bit helpless because the mind and the intelligence, logic and reason will not bring me to the ultimate goal. That is good, because we need to give up all our material conceptions, right? We want to come more into feeling and uh, receiving feelings. And that is very individual. That's why, in, in uh, especially Raga Nuga Bhakti, we become more individual and also our understanding of ourself, our guru, and all the circumstances will be very, very individual and very personal. So that is also a very big gift and a very big treasure. And I enjoy very much listening to all of your realizations, Jananda Maharaj. I also uh, appreciate that book very much that uh, you mentioned when Prabhupada was writing his last book, so to say. And I know he did it so that devotee at that time, his name was Rishikesh Ananda. And he also wrote uh, about his dealings with Prabhupada because he came from that background of uh, Gaudiya Mahat even. He was one of the first Westerners disciples of Srila Prabhupada who were for the first five years that he was in the West, in the Gaudiya Mahat. And he had so many questions at that time that were not even possible to think uh, about other devotees coming from the West because they had not this training. So, and also that is very interesting to read. And I copied one letter of him also in that little booklet about uh, introduction to Raga Nuga Bhakti or spontaneous devotion. So it's all very, uh, how do you say, individual, very personal, and also our real realizations will be very... Um, they cannot be conformized or so. I don't know how you say that in English. We cannot make a book about how to realize Srimad Radhika. We have the science of uh, bhakti, that is for sure. But at the same time, we also know sadhya kabunai. There is no prescribed sadhana or way that how we have to do it in the checklist and then it will happen. 
how I have to do and chant, and then I will understand my Gurudev. <laughs> so thank you for this interesting exchange and ex interesting uh, meditation, because it keeps us helpless again, and it keeps us also always in the mood of prayer and receiving receiving feelings, receiving something that cannot be, you know, just re uh, read in the books. Especially this uh, Guru Tattva. And I can personally say, say that since I met our Gurudev, I really, I was, I am still always so astonished about this Guru Tattva, how it works through all of us and how we can connect and how we can have so many different realizations about this Akanda Guru Tattva. It's amazing. And really, I can say in my 30 years of bhakti, When I met Gurudev, I was already practicing for 30 years. I never had anybody explain and give me these feelings like he did. Never, never, never. And even nowadays, I feel it's coming in newer and newer and newer waves. Maybe you understand what I feel, Jayananda Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for sharing, Sriti. I just want to say that uh, what Suniti said, bonaf bona fide spiritual master must be mad uh, or fall in love for his Ishtadev. Otherwise, uh, what else we can learn that this madness? Uh, so <laughs> it is very interesting. And I, I, I find that this is really, really, really so amazed, amazing that it that he transfer to us in small or bigger possibility, but but it's still going on, yeah. And hopefully we will also become mad totally, completely. Thank you. Gora Gominasai Maharaj, he was, he was still with us. He, he told us, uh, is not, uh, I forgot, is not, uh, what do you say, is not uh, kind of, what do you say, in English. Vaishnava is not to say, uh, What is uh, in English? I don't know. Kind of, and he did not say like a past, you know, perfect, reasonable way. You know, this like this, like this, like this, like this. So means he's 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 mad with feeling with Ishtadeva. So therefore, sometimes he did some kind of, you know, like. Uh, little bit mad things you know sometimes gurudev was in 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 that mood he just flow on flow and uh, you know so we so we also felt his mood so this is vaishnava's uh, Interesting, huh? interesting nature. Like children, like child, actually. So, I found out, uh, like, uh, my understanding, some realized persons, like, become child. His <laughs> behavior is not, uh, what do you say, is not, uh, uh, predictable. Is, Predictable. Yeah. yeah, it's not calculated. It's not, uh, what I say, he does do some reasonable, not reasonable. Uh, like, a, you know, like a child say, you know, whatever he likes. Child, he behave whatever he, he likes. So, Gurudev is not, uh, is, Gurudev is, uh, is not uh, controlled by Maya. Gurudev is controlled by, by, by Chit Shakti, like, uh, you know, Fradini Shakti. So therefore, you know, 
whatever he, he does is, you know, is okay. It's not, uh, we, we cannot, uh, what do you say? It's not, uh, it's, we, sh we, we should not uh, criticize whatever, you know, whatever he, you know, however he behaves. It's not uh, to be criticized because he's in mood, he, in, in Baba. In Baba, he can behave different way. Like, uh, so therefore sometimes, you know, like I say, Abaduta, like mad person. Actually, Goswami is also there mad. You know, sometimes crying, sometimes hela de, braje debi ke chararite. You know, they are sometimes like, uh, behaving a little bit like a, like madman. Say, if say, Ragnadas, if we think Ragnadas was staying Radakunda, if we go Radakunda, you know, some, some, some Baba is crying. Always fading down and crying and say some, 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 something, some, what is say, some, some words. Who is not insane, you know? And then we say, oh, this person is mad. This person is crazy. We may think like this. But actually, he may, you know, is very elevated. So we don't know, we never know, you know, some person's behavior, especially someone who is very advanced. Some person become fell down, and some person may cry, some person is loading in, you know, like, uh, behave different way. So therefore, uh, we may not understand, but we, we should not judge. This person is crazy or this person is bad or something like that. Because we don't know who he is. He may be very elevated. Sorry, Nanka. Sorry, Gorachana. <laughs> Maybe we can. No problem. I'm listening. <laughs> it's really nice. I I could add many things to everyone, but <clears throat> this madness is a symptom of of bhava, and uh, we are we are following or we practice. Raga Nuga Bhakti, spontaneous loving devotion. Spontaneous, spontaneous is only possible if I get rid of my conceptions and my rituals and my so-called sadhana. Uh, this time I will do that and then I will do this and after I will do that, maybe this is helping to have this discipline in the beginning. But on the level of bhav, everything becomes so spontaneous that you are beyond your schedule <laughs> and your plans and your sadhana. So sometimes you behave like mad because the feelings, the exchange of love, with Ishtadev becomes so intense that makes you mad. <laughs> Best example of this is Mahaprabhu himself. Now he tried to be sannyasi. <laughs> he want to be sannyasi. He want to give example. No, sannyasi should not eat too much and not associate with rich people and do this. <laughs> but Finally, he become totally mad. He start 
as a sannyasi sometimes, no? he hug women <laughs> on the street. So then people say, oh, this is a mad person. Don't follow him. <laughs> but actually is a very high level of spontaneous feelings that overwhelm you. And I think all our Acharyas, they are on that level and they show also the symptoms, especially Raghunath Swami. But everyone has that, but as long as they teach to others or playing the role of an Acharya, for example, then they cannot show that madness too much. But there are many stories also of Narayan Maharaj when he was overwhelmed <laughs> in Bath, <laughs> almost not possible to give lecture because he was behaving like a child, like a, like a little girl. No? <laughs> so that happens, but Acharya, somehow they have to maintain for the audience and for the public the picture of being a normal person and spiritual teacher. <laughs> Otherwise, if they behave only like madmen, it's very difficult to follow for the normal people. <laughs> but it's very sweet. <clears throat> But also, we, about, can, also uh, we can imitate Guru Dev, you know. Mm. We can, I feel, at least myself, I cannot uh, imitate Guru Dev. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like a Guru Dev is like, a, Guru Dev is really about it because, you know, after get up and then, you know, he just start sometimes, you know, talking, start drinking, you know, sometimes start, you know, eating. And if I follow him, then, you know, for me, it's, it's not so good, you know. I'm so new fight, you know, I want to chant, you know, some, you know, I want to concentrate and chant, you know, like uh, before meeting Gurudev, I want to do certain things, you know. But uh, if without, uh, you know, anything, and then we, I go to Gurudev's room, and then Gurudev's pace is Gurudev. But, uh, you know, then I cannot do. Maybe other people can do, but uh, for me, you know, I cannot chant the Gayatri, I cannot do this, <laughs> that. <laughs> Sometimes, and... Uh, Honestly, we are, we are not to that stage. So we have to, we should not to imitate. We, we have to follow certain, certain things. <laughs> That's also my honest feeling. Yeah, as I said, no, the spontaneous coming on the level of Baha before we have to follow some discipline to keep our mind, to keep our senses and seva always. We have to practice that and don't give space to the mind and the senses to go out. So we have to follow some rules and some discipline, but always we have to know that the goal is to become mad, like Gurudev say, no? we want to become mad, meaning we want to be spontaneous in our loving exchange. And when the feelings are coming, I do something, but I will not repeat it every day because feelings are spontaneous, like waves, they're coming and they're going. But the spontaneous love is the goal of all our teachers. Like Narutam Dastaku also writing in Prem Bhakti Chandrika, no? I want to become mad in Vrindavan. <laughs> Bhakti Vinotaku also praying, when I will run like a madman, only singing <laughs> the names of Radha Krishna. No? 
They all pray for that, <laughs> to become mad. But should not make a show. No? So Rupa Goswami told to Raghunath Das Goswami, please, <laughs> make a small cottage, <laughs> sit inside, hide <laughs> your bhajan. Because if you are such a great sadhu, always crying, rolling on the ground, sitting in the sun whole day, absorbed in meditation, then you will become famous. People will come. Uh, you lose your bhajan. <laughs> you be so better to hide yourself. <laughs> Do inside only, don't show outside. Jesus also say like that, no? You should go inside, lock the door, and then do your prayers. Don't show your prayer in the public <laughs> to others, to impress others. Radhi Radhi, can I share something? Yeah, sure. also, please. <laughs> it's it's so nice to listen to you and the time in Vrindavan is, is like a film inside and outside and around me and now it came to me that all these different moods and situations in Vrindavan are there for to teach. Uh, every morning when I did my seva and walked around the temple and then I have a look into Gurudev's room and look, is he still asleep? What is he doing? And then I carefully go, go in, went in and I never, I never know how is the mood and what is, what they are doing there. Coffee, no coffee, reading, talking, whatever. And this is for me a teaching as a manjari. This, I think for to be in the Kunja with our Swamini, we have to be careful too. We have to look, what does she need? Is she sleeping? Does she like a massage? Uh, what does she like to wear? Um, wants, she wants to be alone or do we have to sing? Do we have to talk to her? All these things. And it brings my, uh, meine Aufmerksamkeit, my, my consciousness to her. And so I can learn this with Gurudev, not to be with me, more to be with him and with all the mandaris around him. And this is one point, it was clear now for me, oh wow, yes, this is his teaching to me or to us in Vrindavan. And when he talks sometimes like this and sometimes he gave an answer to another one um, and I'm there in, in his room or in Zoom, I can listen with my consciousness and then sometimes there is an answer also to my question. And I made the experience when we left his room or we go out and talk to other devotees, what did you understand, what was your essence of this lecture or of this time with Gurudev, then everybody has had different um, things what was important for him or for her. And so I, my feeling is we Swamini opens our heart for these things which are important for us. And so we can listen all together, sit all together and listen to Guru Dev's words. Maybe one time he is talking like this and the next time another, something else. But everybody has his own consciousness and is, like, like Shayananda said, in a special situation with special questions and consciousness. And so what we are hearing is falling in our heart like it's important for our growing on the spiritual way. And there is a third point. <laughs> for me especially, when Gurudev is not 
like the same one day like this and his mood and what he said is different that helps me to learn to listen to my heart and also like to talk with other devotees one says like this another one say you have to do different you have to do this sometimes confusing I'm, I'm not from iskon i don't know these rules and regulations it was very very interesting for me to see okay many opinions and what does my heart says what feels good to do and so like gurudev says i'm the navigator but the goal is rada to listen to navigation from gurudev and sometimes navigation through other devotees but at the end we are the one you have to do the steps and have to feel what is now the next step for me in my situation and sometimes i have fast an idea and sometimes it takes days weeks or months to find the next thing to do but this helps me to grow and also to deepen my love to gurudev i know that he is loving so deeply and unbelievable and the love is much higher than to understand his words sometimes i do not understand but i know he said in love and this is so this is this what help, helps me to grow and to deepen my one pointedness to swami me jai radha jai gurudev Yeah, thank you, Rasmani. <clears throat> to become a self-thinking and self-feeling devotee is also necessary in Raganuga Bhakti. We don't want to become like a robot or like a machine. Everybody doing the same at the same time, and we follow the rules and regulations, and then uh, we achieve our goal. But that is never spontaneous. And if if you see the variety of great sadhus that we already could uh, associate with or listen listen of. They are so different in their sadhana, what they are doing. You see, Anantaras Babaji, he was absorbed in Shastra. He usually not come out from his ashram from <laughs> no? and doing parigram. Pran Krishna Das Babaji only doing parigram. Guru Dev, he is not doing much kirtan or shastra. He is absorbed in listening. Eh? Guru Dev is like absorbed in listening. He likes to listen. So the process of or the different practices of bhakti. Like Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Parasevanam, Achanam. They are prescribed. But how you absorb yourself? What is the best way for you to connect? That everyone individually has to find out. <laughs> someone like to sing, someone like to cook. Someone like to dress the deities. Uh, someone want to grow flowers or making garlands. So it is very individual thing how to absorb yourself. And I think this is the most beautiful 
thing in our tradition that we are so free to find out how I want to serve, how I can connect, and even when, early morning or evening, <laughs> even in that you are free. How to do it, how to connect. Yeah. We are not like Buddhist monks <laughs> who are doing everything together, every day the same, no spontaneous feelings. That is the beauty of Raga Nuga Bhakti. Jai Ho. <clears throat> Reading little more or what? Yeah, maybe little more. <laughs> or maybe somebody want to share. Yeah, yeah, that's also good. That's also good, no? Okay, I'm continue reading. Devotee, <clears throat> living entities who are eager to return home to the transcendental kingdom of God, Goloka Vrindavan, by means of attaining their spiritual bodies, Siddha Deha, should live at Radha Kunda, take shelter of the confidential maidservants of Sri Radha, and under their direction engage constantly in her service. Gurudev, <clears throat> Spiritual body cannot come, and material body is like a plastic body, like this plastic, showing a AC control panel. You see, this is plastic here, and the senses are like the bottoms. Somebody lives in this body and somebody lives in the buttons only. He plays with the buttons only. His nature is to be in buttons, in my senses. Be eager to go back to home now in her service. Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> Hello. I just want to uh, add that when I transcribed the classes, I left the many things very raw. No, I didn't put so much my own words in there. But just to make it sure that when Gurudev says spiritual body cannot come, actually it means uh, if we want to say it, uh, in our words, the spiritual body cannot come if uh, we're still in the plastic body and if we are still in the button pressing consciousness, right? So sometimes this, uh, when we know Gurudev and we can hear how he speaks in this way, he is giving us the hint or the feeling that, yeah, we know what is the goal, but how to take the spiritual body, the Siddha Deha, it is not, if I still live in so much uh, identification with the buttons of my body. <laughs> Just I wanted to share this. The button pressing consciousness. <laughs> Very nice.
Her servers understand Jai Shri Radhe. Radha Shakti saying something. You said Krishna is dry and I didn't like that. All Sufis are madly in love with this Krishna. They are calling him the beloved. It is not dry. It is a different degree of love. He is full of love. Gurudev, no. He is a beggar of love. Radhe, I also want to <laughs> share on yeah, this, Gora Jadna, because this also was such a funny um, example of how how Gurudev is speaking on one level and disciple is coming from another level. And this happens to us all the time, actually. Na? Because Gurudev is speaking from the level of Dasivav, of his you know, spiritual identity, although he was just before explaining how we should not live in the senses. That he can explain, but also he is, you know, his relation to speak about Krishna is from the Dasibhav. From the servant of Shimateratika's feelings. Ne? So that's why he says Krishna is so dry. But then uh, our our position as disciples, we think, no, no, Krishna is not so dry. He is also good. He is God also. And the same thing also once happened to me. I I observe myself when Udava was speaking something, I it, I took position of Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying that Krishna has to learn how to love. All of a sudden, something inside of me reacted. No, no, no. He's the best lover of Srimate Radhika. <laughs> what are you saying? He has to learn how to love. So also, we sometimes have these games, you know, in the different feelings. We are reacting in different feelings. So also Radha Shakta, he is Radha Shakti. Uh, she says, Krishna is not dry. Everyone loves him. He's not really dry. But Gurudev comes, that is from, you know, his feelings of a Darcy. He's very dry. He needs the rasa, the the nectar of love of, of, of my Swamini. So that is so funny that how Gurudev is helping us also to realize on what level of feelings or emotion Am I when I talk like this to him and then he's reflecting and then he says, yes, if you look at God, then he is like, you know, God, Lee. But if we look at it from a uh, Vrindavan mood, if where he wants to forget that he is God, he becomes the beggar of love. And that is a perfect example how sometimes Gurudev says something and we get it in the different feelings because we are not in the same feelings, maybe. And that is very interesting to, uh, how do you say, observe. No? <laughs> observe the different feelings in the interactions. Very interesting. And also observe my feelings. Oh, why do I feel like this at the moment? Oh, I'm in God consciousness. And Gurudev is in Braj consciousness. He's in Dasiba. So these are very details to, to feel it. And it's very interesting that now also we are in this situation where we can observe what is the different feelings and how Gurudev is showing us how to come in the Stai Bhav in that one feeling why Krishna is a beggar of love. Hey, Aya, good evening, And uh, I understood, like, say, at least uh, I have tendency to see neutral position. Because, uh, because if someone who knows Shastra and then someone want to see this neutral position, this is like, this is right. But actually, Actually, what is Dashi Baba means? 
say if we become dasi and then our vision become all dasi's vision. So we have to forget other vision. We have to forget neutral vision. We forget gopi's vision. We forget mother's vision. If we want to be, want to become manjari, we have to forget other vision. Only one vision. So therefore, like sometimes manjari, manjari say some joking or sometimes criticize Mohan because of Dasi Baba. So sometimes Guru Dev say, you know, Krishna's rascal, Krishna's womanizer, Krishna's dry. That is as a Dasi, they feel like this. But we say sometimes we are go people. No, 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 no. Krishna's very beautiful. Krishna's very, you know, attractive. Krishna's not dry. Krishna's full of rasa. This is go people. Good Dev's word. But we don't understand what is Gopi Baba, what is Manjari Baba. We don't understand what is, you know, Radha Dik Sneha, what is, what is Bishama Sneha, what is, you know, Sama Sneha. We don't, maybe we know words, but we don't, we don't know really in this perspective. So therefore, in this, in this vision, we have to, we have to learn from Guru Dev. We have to be always with him, physically or mentally. Oh, and then, oh my God, this is Guru Dev's vision. And then we slowly, slowly, we, we learn what is a vision? What is perspective? What is Manjari Baba? What is Manjari's watching? What is Manjari's vision? What is Manjari's behavior? So this is, we, have to learn, we have to steal Guru Dev. That is my, my feeling, my understanding. Very nice. Very, very true. And I am also like you, Jainanda. I, I, I always analyze. My mind is very much used to analyzing. Because also when you are teaching, Usually, you always try to understand everything from every position, right? That is yeah. a neutral position. And that's why sometimes we also say that about Rupa Goswami, he was the first and foremost teacher, or is, you know, of the science of bhakti. So he looked from all different, he explained this and how this and this and that and Shantaras and Sakyaras, Vatsalya Ras. But actually, Raghunath Das Goswami only show us the Tulsi bath, not the Manjari bath. He was living in that. So what Gurudev also tries to teach me is that observe your own, own level. Observe where is your feeling, where is your dreaming, where is your thinking. And that is a, such a, a, that's why we go to Rindavan. You don't get this anywhere else. Because most of us, all of us, I would say, we are on bodily pl platform. How can we help each other so much? No? The normal, ordinary devotee. If someone is a little bit better, a little bit higher, he can understand, oh, I am pressing my buttons again. But only good if can, can go uh, in the details with us to give us this fixed feeling of a Darcy and that, that's why we need to have this association. And that's why we need to feel where I am coming from. Where am I now? Not only like, you know, as a human, okay, I'm here working here, doing this service. I am this, this, this. But where in my consciousness am I? And this reflection, like you said, is so important to, to always observe in myself. And to feel also how good if is helping me with that, to come on higher levels. Thank you. And I also like what you said, Rajeshwari. It was very nice to feel how you advance in Vrindavan. And thank you very much. And keep on the good Mandri bath. <laughs>
I want to add something about Krishna. That he is the supreme personality of Godhead and he is full of the six opulences. All beauty and knowledge and wealth and fame, strength and renunciation. But one day I was thinking one very important quality he don't have. <laughs> and it's love. I was thinking this is a very interesting point. He is full of all his opulences, but love is not mentioned there. So he has no love. <laughs> Gurudev said, no, he don't have love. He is the reservoir of unlimited sweet qualities. But only the love from the devotee can trigger it to come out no? in different, different feelings. And when he receives love, then he is also capable to respond to that. Otherwise, he has no love. Like, ye yatamam prapatyante. Everyone, I, I respond to the mood you approach me. Then between you and me, rasa can flow <laughs> because I am the reservoir of unlimited sweet qualities. But without relation, the experience of his beautiful qualities cannot be triggered or cannot come out. So as a Bhagavan, he is full of opulence, but love is not there. <laughs> but as Yashoda Nanda and Sham Sunda, in loving relation with his devotees, the flow of rasa can start because of the loving relationship. And also when Gurudev say that he is dry, yes, he's speaking from from the mood of Manjari. And this is the highest mood. We imagine for ourselves that the level of Brahman, huh, of liberation in our soul consciousness, like in the state of Ananda, that is a kind of happiness that probably feels very, very nice. <laughs> no? Kind of ecstasy that probably we never experienced before. To be a free soul, no? liberated soul. Ananda. But from the level of Prem, no? it is so many times mentioned in the Shastra that one drop of prem cannot be compared with with anything in the whole creation. So prema, one drop of prema is so much, so much, so much more ecstasy than the level of ananda in the soul consciousness and also much, much, much higher than all the other relationships that follow. Like here in the book, Gurudev will mention after the relations of Rukmini with Krishna, the relation of Yashoda, the relation of Arjun, the relation of Mirabai, different, different devotees on different, different levels of love. They taste a different, different degree of prema also. But Gurudev 
He's speaking from the highest level, from a level of manjari. And from that level, everything else becomes somehow dry. Not very relishable, because Gurudev relishing the highest. And of course, when Gurudev in his Swarup is in the Kunja, and he can see Swami, <laughs> and he can see Krishna, then he thinks, oh, he's very dry. <laughs> he's begging. <laughs> he feels empty. Dry means also heat. Uh, <laughs> when, when there's a lot of heat, then everything becomes dry. So Krishna he is so much in passion. So much oh, Raja, <laughs> so much passion. He totally is dry and he asking for one drop of <laughs> Radharani to, to quench his thirst. So again, Guru Dev says something. No? like he is dry, but you can see there are so, so many different angles, how you can see that. And yeah, that is really amazing. And yeah. So very nice point. If we have high position, then dry and love cannot go. So therefore, in Vrindavan, Krishna want to give up high God, 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 godliness. Krishna give up God. I don't like God. I don't, I don't be humble person like coward boy. Then he become servant of Radhika. Then love goes through. So therefore, in, so we can see Krishna want to give up his position of object. He want to be subject. Means he, he give up God. I want to be servant of love. So this is the main point. And we also, we have to give up this, this kind of uh, ego, this, you know, we are high. I know everything. I'm great. We have to forget. We, 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 we are very humble. We are made servant, lowly made servant. Or well, some people may say, I marked my, you know, marked servant, made servant. That's also okay. But, uh, <laughs> We have to forget Aishwarya Baba. We have to forget high position. Then that is Krishna want. This is Mahaprabhu's. There's Mahaprabhu's pastime. It kind of, you know, completely changes, changes, what I say, dimension. What way we completely change. Position is change. That is the beauty of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Krishna could understand how to change my position, how to be more Dasi Baba, how to be more humble mood. So this is, uh, I think, secret of Mahaprabhu and secret of uh, to enter this Raganuga Bhaja. So thank you very much, Gore Chandra. And Suniti Diti and all of you. Yeah, it also shows that love is the highest thing. God is not the highest thing. Love is the highest thing. 
Mahaprabhu, Krishna taking the position of the lover. He, he teach that there's more happiness to love than to receive love. <laughs> to give love is more ecstatic than to receive love. Mm. So Krishna, he loves all his devotees so much because they are lovers. They are really lovers. <laughs> they love me in so many different ways. My devotees, they are so great. And Radharani, of course. No? Gopi is first. I can never repay you. Your love is so exceptional. What you do for me, I can never do for you. And from all gopis, of course, Radharani, she is the highest, the purest, the sweetest, the most humble. So by taking her position, he also glorifies her, no? Shri Radhe, maybe enough for today. Yeah. No? Yeah, maybe next time we can continue. <laughs>